My name is Bob Williams. I uh, live in New Zealand. I was originally from the United Kingdom, England. Um, I predominantly work in uh, the evaluation field and uh, have a reputation for introducing and using systems ideas uh, in that field and have some reputation in that area and have helped edit a book uh, about the use of systems ideas in the evaluation field. So that's how I ended up here. The process I thought was fantastic. Um, one of the things that I find is I, I too run workshops on, on the um, potential of systems uh, ideas uh, in evaluation. And one of the, the senses that people often get you know, from dialogues like these is that um, there's an awful lot of stuff, lots of things to kind of take away. And there was some discussion and conversations about this. But I just think that's inevitable when you're introducing ideas that have been around for 30, 40, 50 years into a new field. And I think that's just one of those things that it feels like a bit like information overload at first. But, um, no, it's a great dialogue. And I, and I too, I learned heaps from it. One of the things that, that, that I thought was very interesting, I mean, I like uh, to think of frameworks. I'm a framework person. And one of the distinctions that was made that I think I find very useful is a distinction between uh, messes, problems, and puzzles. That sometimes we take a mess, um, we treat it as a problem, and um, yeah, implement it as if it were a puzzle. Now, that may not sound, unless you had to be there. Um, but certainly, it was something that fits quite nicely with some of the, uh, the ideas and the frameworks that I've, I've used as well. The other thing I, I, I take away very much is um, that I touch on the development world in a variety of different ways in some of the work that I do. And there is clearly a lot of dissatisfaction at the moment uh, of two aspects of the way in which the development field is operating. One of them is how it's planned and implemented and financed. What is development for? That sort of stuff. And then also in the evaluation field, there's a lot of uh, dissatisfaction about the various ways in which a lot of the development uh, uh, aid and, and the programs are associated with it are, are evaluated. Um, one of the implications, I think, of, of um, the use of systems or complexity ideas in the development world is that it may actually start posing some questions which are not comfortable. A lot of the systems world asks and complexity field asks discomforting questions. And that was actually something that somebody raised uh, in the feedback today, that they actually felt slightly discomforted uh, early on. Um, but there's no doubt that, that, that people are in the development field are looking for alternatives to the current way in which development is planned, managed, and, and understood. And, and by the look of it, people really did feel as if there were some aspects um, of the systems and complexity field that, uh, that could be useful to address some of those issues. Yes. I mean, the... the uh, Systems ideas, complexity ideas have been used in the development field uh, quite a bit. I mean, in the book that I edited on the use of systems and evaluation, there is actually an example uh, taken from Botswana. People ha are, do actually use this stuff. And I think that's one of the issues that we need to kind of look at, is that um, people always talk about the development field as if, um, as if they know the entire field. But one of the things uh, that I find just traveling around uh, the world is that different people talk about the development field, but it's almost as if they're talking about different fields. Um, and there's no doubt in my mind that some people are using these ideas in the development field. And uh, some of them are using it consciously. And some people are do doing it unconsciously. And one of the, I think, the things that came out of, out of this particular uh, session was the importance and need of finding these stories and telling these stories so that it actually, at the moment, what seems to be a really hard task mm -hmm. is the application of these mm -hmm. ideas. Um, once we begin to 
learned that other people have, have tried these out and, and where they've been successful and where they've been unsuccessful, it makes everything seem much less hard. I used to be a community worker in, in inner London many years ago and one of the things that I found was that it was often even in local authorities, local councils that thought they were radical, they actually really liked to be second mm -hmm. and not first. So I think there's an element here is if we can find examples, at least people don't feel as if they're really sticking their necks out, that someone has done that mm -hmm. for them and to some extent Whew, yes, we, it's perhaps a little safer. We, it's not quite as radical as we thought it was. The short answer is no. Mm -hmm. um, because most of the sort of practical approaches that were described here I've come across before. Um, but what I've gained is a deeper understanding of some of those issues uh, and some of those uh, some of that practice and that's been it will be enormously useful to me